Thomas Dorsey. Remember, tonight's category, everybody, what is it? It is educators and intellectuals. Dorsey definitely uh, is is in the, is the educator category. First of all, out of everyone I've shown tonight, this is by far the coolest looking dude. Look at this. Look at Dorsey. Look at Dorsey. This dude's no joke. Yeah, he does look real cool, doesn't he? <laughs> He's saying, someone's saying, uh, Mark Cleveland's saying that's Andre 3000. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go to this book now about Dorsey, and uh, let me let me show you something here. So, uh, Dorsey, 1899 to 1993, he is the father of black gospel music. In fact, uh, they're saying that he devised the term. Hey, what's up, man? Nate with the super chat saying, "I love you, bro, cab." I appreciate that. Precious Lord, take my hand. That is Dorsey's most iconic number. If you read the story about it, it's uh, it's quite tragic, actually. The way it went down. But it's actually also a very powerful story uh, to, to, to read about. To read about um, Dorsey in the writing of Precious Lord Take My Hand. Have you guys ha heard? Have you guys heard Precious Lord Take My Hand? I hope you have. It's a powerful, beautiful song. And it was actually sung at a rally the night before MLK was assassinated. And at the funeral of Martin Luther King Jr., Precious Lord Take My Hand. And guess what? Lyndon Baines Johnson, LBJ, Precious Lord Take My Hand, was sung there as well. He wrote this song. Dorsey opened the first black gospel publishing company. That's good. We want entrepreneurs and ownership within the black community, don't we? I hope you say the answer is yes. A founder and first president of the National Convention of Gospel Choirs and Choruses. Dorsey served as music director of Pilgrim Baptist Church over 40 years. I like that too. I like that consistency. I like that. I like that. That's good. All right. A lot of you guys are saying you have not heard Precious Store Take My Hand. Ah, you know what? I need to uh I need to try to to get this to you guys then because I'm going to I'm going to try to do this here real quick. You guys need to hear. Okay, I'm going to play I'm going to play a little bit of uh Precious Store Take My Hand. This is written by Dorsey. So Dorsey, I believe wrote this uh as the story goes after he heard that his wife died. And Dorsey's testimony is quite amazing. Dorsey used to go by the name Georgia Tom. And he wrote a song that was filled with sexual innuendo, but nothing by today's standards, called Tight Like That. The song is something else. But I think I can play a little bit of it. I think I can. But he had a, a conversion. And Dorsey went from Georgia Tom to Thomas Dorsey. And really impacted uh, church music in a profound way. And there's a lot of Dorsey songs that you guys might know that maybe you just never heard. And Precious Lord, Take My Hand is probably one of them. Let me let me pray this. Well, so that's that. That's a powerful song that uh, Dorsey penned. And then also, you know, so here's a whole entry in this book on the history of gospel music by the Smithsonian. Just to read a little bit about them. Um, it's pretty, pretty amazing uh, when you think about it. You really can't even know all of his contributions. He was a composer, pianist, organizer, and conductor of choirs. People love when they when they understand his legacy, his courage, his vision, his musicianship, and his integrity. Gospel music did not have the popularity back then that it does now. And um, Dorsey, that's why he's called uh, the father of gospel music because of what he uh, what he did with. In fact, in the nineties and nineteen forties and fifties. It was almost uh, people would almost call all new gospel songs Dorsey's. Actually, they actually just call them Dorsey's. Let me read here a quote here. Another example of this kind of naming occurred as the 18th and 19th century African American Christians developed their own distinct style of lining the new Protestant hymns. They sang the hymns of Charles Wesley and John Newton, but it was the lyrics of Isaac Watts that resonated so deeply within the collective psyche of the congregation that even today, in some communities that still practice the lining out tradition, all lining hymns are called Dr. Watts. Now, um,. He has influenced contemporary composers as well. Eden Hawkins, Clark, Andre Crouch. Crouch is, uh, he's still alive. Some of you probably know who Andre Crouch is. Really well known. And uh, he's also influenced, and you can kind of hear it. Um, so, I, man, I wish I could, I wish I could, I wish I could uh, really get into this, but I just can't. But this is a pretty cool book. It actually analyzes a lot of uh, what he did. And it's some beautiful, beautiful stuff. 
Precious Lord, Take My Hand is a powerful song. Um, I want to read it, but I just feel like I can't do it justice. I encourage you instead to look it up and, and look at it. But Thomas Dorsey stands uh, powerful as a singular figure, figure within church music, basically inventing a genre, and was a powerful example of, of a composer and musician in that genre himself, and just really can't be touched as far as his influence on gospel music. And you know, the thing is that uh, gospel music has influenced all types of other musics. What is soul music? It's gospel music ripped out of the Christian content. Do you know that? That's what soul music was. Aretha, or I'm sorry, um, Helia Jackson even recognized that. And think about all the genres soul music has influenced, right? And if you think about all the things that gospel gospel music has influenced, it, it gets pretty, pretty big. It's a pretty big list. There's a picture of Dorsey, though, you know, in his sort of full glory as far as, uh, you know, when he's in that other vibe, not in his Andre 3000 vibe. Um, but it, it's a powerful story. The point is more than coincidental. It portrays a de delicate symbiosis between Dorsey's life and the emergency, uh, emergence of gospel blues. Indeed, between black culture. Dorsey as an archetype of that culture and the middle class black church as an institutionalization of that culture. Dorsey as an African American and the church as African American religion have complete histories only as subsets of African American culture. From the perspective of this interdependency, Dorsey's role as a father of gospel blues was limited in the sense of his being able to lay claim to its genesis. There was an asymmetry of old new cultures manifested as rural southern and urban northern in black churches. Dorsey happened to be there with an urbanized version of the rural culture's music that was powerful enough to counter the Beethoven and Mozart of the northern culture and that was authentic enough to give status to the former southerners. Because when uh, the southerners migrated north, this is bugged out. A lot of the churches, the black churches at that time were doing like classical music stuff. And Dorsey and that style brought sort of the southern roots to those sort of northern churches and gave them something more fitting, I think, uh, for the context. Thus, Dorsey conceived of gospel blues, but its purpose and ultimate shape were not his to determine. If there is a cause-effect factor in this tripart symbiosis of secular and sacred, lower class and middle class, rural, southern, and urban northern, it has to be the notion of duality and its pervasiveness not just in Dorsey's life but in African American culture and religion. The similarities among exposure, conflict, and resolution between Dorsey's life and the church and the culture are traceable to the two-ness that is central in the African American experience. Now, that's from a secular academic. This is not a Christian book even though it's history of gospel music. Nonetheless, it's true enough, and Dorsey is someone people should know, and boy, he did a lot of great music. Street apologist. 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 Whoa, on the radio.